unlike in the US where we would have known before she was born, that she had sickle cell. She was born when we were in Kenya. Somewhere in the middle of the night, from nowhere, she spontaneously started to cry. So for her, we didn't know about it until it just manifested itself through painful crisis. For us, I think we started worrying about how long we might have her around. I think knowing, knowing what the numbers were for sickle cell patients, especially in Kenya. The prominent feature of it is the excruciating pain. They have like all different ways of explaining their pain, but bottom line is, it's one of the most horrible pains. She's very friendly, she's always smiling, and she's one of like the happiest people you'll ever meet. And she's always reaching out to people to help, I mean, to the teachers to help. She's even recognized for that kind of behavior in class. And she, yeah, she's such a well-behaved, friendly, and sometimes that actually hurts me bad to see that she's got that disease when she's the type of person she is. But then in terms of education, we, we started talking to the school about making accommodation. Like, you know, what options do we have? So most schools actually don't know so much about sickle cell. So in, first of all, it was a process for us to educate them what sickle cell was. And in some cases, they tend to think kids with sickle cell are kind of acting out because they don't want to come to school. It's a process. You've got to champion and act for it for your child to be able to get that. It doesn't come by default. If there is one thing I wished to know long before we had sickle cell, it's actually the toll it takes to take care of patients with sickle cell. As a parent, I don't have an option. It's my duty to do that. That's the least I can do.